Hi, I'm Dr. McFerrin with DM Explains. In this video, I'm going to talk about four cases of the Routh Hurwitz array and focus on the last three cases to do some examples. So here are the four cases. So the first case is the case that is probably the most familiar and if you have taken a first introductory lesson into using the Routh Hurwitz, you would have seen this. But the first case is the case when all entries in the first column of the Routh array are non-zero. The second case is the case in which the first entry in a row is zero, but there is at least one non-zero entry in the rest of the row. In this case, what we're going to do is replace the zero in the first column with epsilon. Epsilon is considered to be a very, very small positive number. And then what I'll do is I'll continue as normal. And if I find sign changes, then the system is unstable. But if there are no sign changes, the system is marginally stable. Numbers three and four are related. These are the case where we have a row of all zeros. In this case, we're going to have a complex conjugate pair of poles. And they might be on the j omega axis, so like this. This is number three. Or they might be in the right half plane. Or they might be in the right half plane. That's number four. So three is the case when there is no sign change when we replace the first entry in the row with epsilon. And number four is the case in which there is a sign change. So the first is marginally stable and the second is unstable. To help us understand this better, I want to do several examples. So in example number one, I give you a characteristic equation, s cubed minus 3s plus 2 equal to 0. And I want you to find out if the system is stable using the Routh Hurwitz array. OK, so in order to solve this problem, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to construct my array. I start by finding the highest value power of s. So I've got s cubed, then s squared, s to the first, and s to the zeroth here along the left-hand side. And then I'm going to take the coefficient of s cubed first. So that's 1. And then I'm going to take the next coefficient for skipping one, so not s squared, but s to the first. That's negative three in this case. I can keep going, I can add a zero, do some zero padding if necessary. Then I go to the s squared row. I find the coefficient of s squared. In this case, there is zero s squared. And then I find the coefficient of s to the zeroth. So I skip one, I come to s to the zeroth. That's two, and then I have a zero. Okay, so as a reminder of how the Routh Hurwitz array works, I'm going to ha take negative three times zero. But let's hold up. We realize that we can't use zero here. That's not going to be any good because I'm going to need to divide by that later on. So let's replace this zero by epsilon, which is considered to be a small positive number. So I've got negative three times epsilon and then I'm going to subtract from that 2 times 1. So right color here, that's 2. And then I divide by the original value, which is epsilon. So if epsilon is a small positive value, negative 3 times epsilon is a small negative value. And if I subtract negative 2 from that, that is more negative. And if I divide it by epsilon, which is positive, I'm still left with a negative. So I'll just write down this is negative. All right, let's find the next item in that column, or the next column in that row. So I've got 
s to the 1. So I'll take 0 times epsilon, so 0. And then I'll have 0 times 1, so minus 0, divided by the original epsilon. So this is equal to 0. All right, we're almost there. s to the 0th. For that row, I will take my value 2 times this mess, negative 3 epsilon minus 2 over epsilon. Let's just call that equal to x. So I've got 2 times x minus, and then I have 0 times epsilon, so 0. And then I divide that by the original value negative 3 epsilon minus 2 over epsilon. So I divide that by x. So this is just equal to 2. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at each row and determine the sign of the first column. So in the first row, first column is 1, then epsilon, then I've got a negative number, so that's negative, and then a positive number. And then what I'll do is I'll count the sign changes. I see that between s squared and s to the 1, and then s to the 1 and s to the 0, I've got two total sign changes, which means I have two poles located in the right half plane. This makes the system unstable. So let's repeat this same problem statement, but with a new example. So example two, be prepared. This one will take up quite a bit of space. My characteristic equation is s to the fifth plus two s to the fourth plus two s cubed plus 4s squared plus 11s plus 10 equals to 0. So with this, let's make my Ralph array s to the fifth, s to the fourth, s cubed, s squared, s to the first, s to the zeroth. So my coefficients here are s to the fifth, I've got 1, then I skip one, I've got 2s cubed, then I skip one, and I've got 11s, and then I skip one, I've got zero. Then I have 2s to the fourth, skip one, 4s squared, 10s to the zeroth, and put a zero here. So just as a reminder of what we'll do here, I've got two times two, and then I'm going to subtract from it four times one, and then I'll divide by the original two. So that's going to be 2 times 2 minus 4 times 1 divided by 2. That's equal to 0. Then I'll take 11 times 2 minus 10 times 1 all divided by 2. So 11 times 2 minus 10 times 1 all divided by 2. That is 22 minus 10. That's 12. And then if I continue on, the next item will be 0. In the s squared row, we're going to use the same approach. So I've got 4 times 0, but instead of 0, I will replace it with the value epsilon, which is small and positive. So I've got 4 times epsilon minus 12 times 2 divided by epsilon. So I don't really care about the value. Epsilon is very small and positive, so I've got 4 times a very small positive value. I'm going to subtract from that 12 times 2. Let me correct myself. I had 12 on the top divided by 2. That should be 6. So this one should be 6 times 2. My apologies. So I'm going to subtract a very small positive value. I'm going to subtract from it about 12. That's a, a negative value, almost negative 12. I'm going to divide it by a positive value, so I'm left with a negative, because a negative divided by a positive is still negative. Um, I'll give this thing the name x. Then I come over to the next one. I've got 10 times epsilon minus 0 times 2 over epsilon. That's equal to 10. In the s to the first place, I've got... 6 times x minus 
10 times epsilon over x. Since x is negative, 6 times x is also negative, and I subtract from that divided by a negative. That should be positive. If I divide two negatives, I've got a positive left behind. In the second column for s to the first, I'm going to have 0 times x minus 0 times epsilon over x. That's equal to 0. Lastly, in the s to the 0th place, I'm going to be getting 10 because I've got 10 times this garbage here, 6x minus 10 epsilon over x, minus 0 over 6x minus 10 epsilon over x. So I'm left with just 10. Hopefully you can start to see the pattern of items that emerge here. Let's count our sign changes between s cubed, which is a small positive number, epsilon, and s squared, I flip signs, and then I do it again from s squared to s to the first. So I count a total of two sign changes, which means I've got two poles in the right half plane, and this is unstable. Alrighty, let's do two more examples. These are going to focus on three and four, the different options there. Example number three, I've got s cubed plus 3s squared plus 4s plus 12 equals to 0. That's my characteristic equations. And I want to look at the stability. So s cubed, s squared, s to the first, s to the zeroth. I'm going to have the coefficient of s cubed, which is 1. 4, which is the coefficient of s to the first, and then 0. Then I've got 3s squared, and then I've got 12s to the 0, 0. So when I do this, I'm going to have 4 times 3, that's 12, minus 12 times 1, that's 12, divided by the original 3. So that's equal to 0. Uh-oh. Then I've got 0 times 3 minus 0 times 1. That's also equal to 0. So what I notice is that I've now got a row of zeros, which means that I'm in case three or four. Since this happens to be the case, what I would like to do is I would like to replace this first value with epsilon and go about my business and see what happens. When I do so, I've got 12 times epsilon minus 0 over epsilon, so that's equal to 12. So now let's look at the signs of all the first items. 1 is positive, 3 is positive, epsilon is positive, 12 is positive. That means there are no sign changes, which is very exciting because what it tells me is that the system is marginally stable because there are two poles on the j omega axis. Alrighty, last example, example number four. In this example, I've got s to the fourth plus s cubed minus three s squared minus s plus two equals to zero. That's my characteristic equation. Let's roll with my Ralph Hurwitz array, s to the fourth, s cubed, s squared, s to the first, s to the zeroth. So I've got one, negative three, two, zero, and then I've got one, negative one, zero. Okay, so to find my first value of s squared, I've got negative three times one minus negative one times one, so plus one over one. That's equal to negative two. And then I've got 2 times 1 minus 0 divided by 1. So that's equal to 2. And then I've got 0. Finally, I come to the s to the first. In s to the first, I've got negative 1 times negative 2. So that's 2 minus 2 times 1. 2 over negative 2. 
this is equal to zero. The next item is zero times negative two minus zero times one over negative two, that's zero. So again, I have a row of all zeros. Okay, I'm gonna replace this first zero by epsilon, and then I've got two times epsilon minus zero times negative two over epsilon, which is just equal to two. So let's look at sign changes. I've got a positive one, a positive one, a negative two, that's a sign change, then a epsilon, which is positive, and then a positive two. So I count one, two sign changes. So two sign changes, which tells me I've got two poles, which are complex conjugates, in the right half plane. This is unstable. All right, that's where I want to leave it for now. So until next time, thanks for watching.